you can access the FATIMAT agenda uh, using this tiny URL link uh, up above. Um, there you'll see in the agenda that we're going to be, you know, starting with a welcome, which is what I'm doing, uh, introductions and overview of, of what we're going to be talking about, particularly with regards to FathomNet. Um, Kevin's going to take on talking about the FathomNet model zoo, followed by Lonnie, who'll talk about some of the baseline models we've been training for use uh, with the community. Um, Angus Forbes is going to be talking about Fathom GPT, which is really exciting. It's going to be kind of an official unveiling of this feature. Um, and then Kevin will follow up with a, a capital competition description that we're planning on doing this year. Um, and then I will talk really briefly about Fathomverse um, before we head into a short break, uh, go into breakouts, um, and then and then finish up with a quick wrap up where I'll also talk about some of the future uh, steps and directions that we're going to be taking Fathomnet. Um, and, and just a reminder for those of you who have not participated in a FathomNet workshop before, um, this is a Zoom meeting. And so what that means is you have a lot of flexibility in terms of, you know, using your audio, sharing your video. Um, and just be careful with that. Uh, number one, the workshop will be recorded. Um, and, and, you know, for participation, because we're largely presenting to kind of an, an empty room, you know, turn on your video if you are able so that we can also see you and your reactions to some of the content that we're sharing. Uh, please turn off your microphone um, unless asked otherwise. Um, we will mute you, uh, but just be sure that that will, that can be disruptive. Um, we also ask that you use the chat and Q&A to share questions and comments. And what we'll be doing is uh, addressing those comments during the Q&A. And then again, use the Fathomet agenda as a resource because it has not only the names of the speakers and the content that's gonna be shared, uh, but also there's gonna be links to collaborative content like Google Docs or slides, um, you know, PDFs of the slides that we're going to be sharing, uh, and then eventually the recordings once these are um, uh, released. Um, so really quickly, uh, Fathomet is in V1. Uh, that's a big change from when we last met last time. Uh, the project started in, in, in summer 2018, uh, thanks to some uh, funding support from uh, NOAA, uh, National Geographic Society, and Ambari. Uh, the pandemic delayed the original launch date of late 2020, uh, but then we were able to beta launch the website for Fathomnet in September of 2021. Uh, V1 uh, officially launched last summer, um, and really the goals here is to share updates that we have on FathomNet, um, help build this community because I think this is only going to be successful with contributions from the community, uh, and then also generate feedback for improved features to implement in late 2024. Um, quick introductions. Uh, so today you're going to be hearing, um, you know, words and content from various members of the FathomNet team, uh, as well as a number of presenters. Um, from Mbari, uh, we have Brian Schlinning, Lonnie Lunston, Giovanna Staines, Kevin Barnard, and myself, Kakani Katija. Um, from C Vision AI, we have Aaron Butler and Ben Woodward. Um, ODL, Brian Kennedy is, is involved, and uh, we'll be talking a little bit about some of those projects that he's leading. Uh, Noah, we're represented by Megan Cromwell. And then finally at NOC, uh, Eric Orenstein is a co-lead on FathomNet along with, with Kevin Barnard. Um, so if anyone wants to wave, <laughs> I guess Kevin and Lonnie, I can see you. Um, all right. So with that, uh, let's get started. Um, so introduction to FathomNet, very, very, very high level. I just want to share with you uh, where kind of the vision or the goals of FathomNet started and, and where we are today. Uh, apologize for the choppy um, video, but this is a video. And the idea is it's a video that's collected underwater using one of our underwater robots. Uh, and as you all know, visual data contains a lot of information. So it not only tells us something about the animals that might, that might live there, but also the different conditions, the type of substrate, the relative uh, abundance of these animals in these different environments. Um, and so there's a big challenge in trying to process this information and make it available or useful uh, for science. And so as you know, right, the, the challenge that we're trying to solve here and artificial intelligence is is being viewed as a potential mechanism or tool to help us get from visual data coming in to annotated data coming out. 
Um, but in order for that to work, you have this kind of iterative loop that involves humans verifying and training artificial intelligence, using artificial intelligence to generate predictions, and then humans, again, verifying what those outputs are. Um, as part of that, you know, for AI training, uh, you were, this often requires labeled data. Um, and so in this example, FathomNet is the source of labeled data that we work with. But at the end of the day, the, the biggest bottleneck that our entire community faces is the human verification. How do you incorporate humans into this workflow in an efficient manner, given the differences in expertise that are required? Um, and so we pitched this idea to, Ocean, uh, to NSF's Convergence Accelerator Program. Um, my understanding is it's one of the uh, highest funded awards that you can receive from the National Science Foundation. And we pitched Ocean Vision AI, which is a program to accelerate observations in marine life using artificial intelligence. Uh, with that funding support, it was almost $6 million in over three years. We've been able to uh, get FathomNet over the finish line into V1, but also work on some other solutions that address this challenge of getting human verification. <laughs> so the additional challenge, right, is you have a very wide range of um, individuals that have different types of expertise. You have lots of, you know, you have lots of enthusiasts who you know, might have had a, a marine bio um, degree, uh, love watching nature documentaries. We don't have a lot of experts, like expert taxonomists, experts in computer vision or machine learning. And so we have to create human AI interfaces that engage these groups uh, when they are absolutely needed. And so uh, we did a lot of user-centered design and evaluated different options and recognized that there wasn't any single one solution that would enable these connections with this entire audience and instead uh, focus on individual um, kind of uh, interfaces that will uh, address these needs. And so first is FathomNet. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and so high level, FathomNet is intended to be a global image and machine learning model repository where you can upload and host visual data and machine learning models and make them publicly available so that it is the source of labeled data that our community can use. Uh, you can search, view metadata and augment labels. And really the idea here is we're creating a taxonomic expertise aggregator so people can learn from uh, the expertise of other members within our community. Um, we've also entered into an agreement with NOAA to host some metadata uh, for up to 75 years for free for con from contributors all over the world. I was hoping to present on that um, pipeline this this year as part of the, Fa the FathomNet workshop, but sadly we didn't finish it, so uh, stay tuned for the next one. Uh, and then finally, we are involved in annual FathomNet Kaggle competitions as part of the CVPR, so the Computer Vision Pattern Recognition Conference and the Fine Grain Visual Categorization Workshop. Uh, and so Kevin will talk about that capital competition that's planned for this year. And really what we're trying to create is an open source ecosystem that can be used by a lot of members of our community. The idea here is that the database can be accessed by the website or API. Um, and this is what the landing page of the website looks like. Uh, when you're there, you can do all sorts of things like explore the data, look at different metadata, uh, and then also see you know, where these observations might be on a map. Um, you also have the ability to not only review metadata, but also augment the, the data that are in the database uh, with this lightweight annotation tool that's available on the website. Uh, we've also created tutorials uh, in articles, video, and code that can be found on FathomNet's Medium, YouTube, and GitHub pages. Um, and then uh, finally, a collection of machine learning models can be found in FathomNet's model zoo. Uh, the big update is that we've moved our model zoo from GitHub repo to Hugging Face. And so Kevin will talk about that, or Lonnie, both of you are going to be talking about that today. Uh, and then finally, uh, the goal here is to leverage widely available open source tools for AI model architectures uh, that allow for training and annotation. Uh, so that's FathomNet. Uh, the next thing that we've been uh, funded to uh, create is the portal, uh, which I won't talk about in much detail today, but the idea here is we're providing access to these machine learning uh, pipelines so that if your group or institution is interested in participating in that, 
um, this really opens up those features uh, to a broader range of people that doesn't require a computer science degree. And then last but not least is Fathomverse. Um, it's a game where we're trying to invite uh, non-experts into this process of helping us uh, annotate and uh, analyze uh, ocean collected visual data. And I'll talk about that in a little bit later. But then again, right, the whole goal here is through each of these platforms to generate human verification that can contribute to these, uh, these workflows to help us get annotated data out. Um, and so the hope is someday we'll be able to have uh, process data like this one that you see here, um, regardless of where you are collecting your data and information. Um, and so with that, I'm happy to take any questions, um, but I hope this is just a high level uh, introduction to what you're going to be seeing today um, and what we've been working on and where we will be um, moving in, in, in the future.